Well, good evening. <laughs> hello, hello, hello. Here we are in 2021, our first show for the new year, Mothers and Daughters Candid Conversations, and we have a great guest tonight. Iranda, my co-host, will not be with us tonight. She's a newlywed, so I congratulate her again. <laughs> <laughs> yes, uh, marriage, <laughs> wedding, and during COVID-19 was uh, quite a task, but they are now happily married, and I'm so proud of them. Um, so I want to introduce to our audience tonight, both Facebook Live, and we have a special guest joining us as well. But tonight, um, our topic, our subject matter is, my daughter wrote her first book. And tonight we are with the author, nine-year-old Jayden Francis. Yeah, that's a smile. <laughs> mother, Materia Francis. And we have joining us um, a special young lady that um, we've interviewed prior to the Christmas holiday, Miss Skyla Dixon and her mother, Thank you so much for coming on. Mom is hiding her face. Hello, Kamara. <laughs> um, thank you for coming on to support Jaden. And we just want to hear all about Jaden's journey to being an author. You know, um, I just finished writing a book and that was a task. It took a lot of editing back and forth. So I can't imagine at nine what you must have gone through. So. I'm going to ask mom first to just talk a little bit about your process and share with us about your book before I have you to share how, how, how did you come up with your writing and what was it like and what is it like now that you are a known author at nine? <laughs> so, you know, when when she brought her manuscript to me, it was actually, um, and I always say, babe, I hope I hope you don't mind me sharing like the story of how you wrote the book. So she wrote the book while she was on punishment. And this was over the Christmas break in 2019. School was out and I, I forgot what her and her sister were getting into, but um, we shut everything down. No electronics, no TV, no iPad, no nothing. So they were a little bit bored and getting rambunctious. So I think at some point I said to them, you know, go read, go write a book, go do something. And um, I, I remember I was laying in the bed and she came to me. She's like, mom, my book is done. I'm like, what? <laughs> She's like, I finished. Wow. So she brought the manuscript to me and I loved it so much because um, it spoke to a lot of the things that we'd been pouring into um, the girls about 12 months before that. And I'll go into it later. But anyway, so when I read the manuscript, I was just like, I feel like I want to do something for her. We need to publish this, you know, so she can feel like, OK, I did a thing like it was good enough that it can be published and other children can read it. So that's how the journey um, began with the manuscript. And Jay, you wanna tell her a little bit about what the book is about and how you came up with the idea? Yeah. Well, I, I'm just, I'm, I'm, I'm really, <laughs> I can remember being on punishment and writing a book wasn't on my mind. So um, I'm very interested <laughs> in how this process while you were, I would imagine, in your room. Is that where you did your writing? Yeah. Okay, well, take us to your room. What happened? Well, so I was just writing, and then I wanted to, like, um, make, like, a little book to show my mom. Okay. Did, did after you wrote your, your uh, manuscript, did you, how long did it take you to write it? Um, not that long, actually. Like, how long were you guys in that room? Um, hmm. <laughs> you don't even remember. I remember. Probably like an hour or two hours. Oh, wow. Now, did you have any hopes that writing would help you get off of punishment? No. No? Oh, okay. Okay. Well, now tell us, what's the name of your book? I Believe I Could. I Believe I Could. And mom, you said that you were um, uh, a few months prior 
were you having conversations uh, uh, about uh, confidence? Because that sounds like a, a, a title that would give you some confidence. So let's share with us. Yeah, and that's why, you know, I mentioned, you know, I, it really, it touched me so much because we had been talking about confidence with the girls a few months prior to that. And we became more intentional about, you know, doing affirmations and talking about believing in yourself because it was, it was a little bit of an issue, you know, nothing overly concerning, but any parent, when you hear your child say um, self-deprecating things or like they doubt themselves and stuff, you know, immediately you kind of go into defensive mode. Like I need to build these kids up, you know, give them a thick skin, you know, for the world out there. Like they have to have a certain level of confidence in order to, to be successful in life. So we just became more intentional about pouring um, into the girls, like the way they believe, the way they speak to themselves, you know, letting them know that the words that you speak are very powerful and they right. can have an impact on you know, where you, where you are in the future. But, you know, we talk and we say things and we never really know if the kids are absorbing what we're saying. You know, we don't know if it's going in one ear and out the other. So when I read her manuscript, I was just kind of like, oh, okay. So they are hearing me. She is hearing me. And, yes. when, and when she talks about, you know, her book and other kids having their book, you know, a lot of times you'll hear her say like, they're going to believe in themselves. Or oh, I hope they believe, you know, so it, yeah. it, it really is inspiring to me to see that that was the output of everything we've been pouring into um, the girl. What a, what a great conversation, you know, um, during these times, it is so important that we pour not just our daughters, but into our children, yes. self-confidence, you know, um, because there's, there's so many young women that just don't have the, the parent or that caretaker that understands the importance and the necessity of encouraging our young girls and to help them build that type of confidence that I can do anything confidence, you know? And yes. so to give them that at an early age, uh, you are more, you can be more than confident that she will be a confident adult. You know, mm -hmm. there's so many so many women that lack self-esteem. Yeah, no. it's it's true. It's true. And that's why it's so important for, for you know all of us to be intentional with not just our daughters, because I know affirmations and the confidence conversation generally is centered around young young girls, but our children in general, like we've got young kings to raise. I don't oh, have any oh, sons, but you know, there are so many, you know, young boys that are com coming up and we need to continue to pour into them, you know, as well. So I really encourage, you know, parents, even if you know you don't see signs, if you're blessed enough not to see signs of confidence and self-esteem issues still continue to pour into these children as they grow and as they become in contact you know with the outside elements you absolutely. Know? absolutely you know um that is a great parenting tool that unfortunately if a parent lacks self-confidence themselves and sometimes they're unable and don't understand the importance and so I thank you for pointing that out. And I'm going to ask, I know she's muted, but um, I, I, shortly I'm going to ask uh, Mrs. Dixon if she would join the conversation because we have two beautiful, um, I can't imagine, nine and eight year old uh, young queen princesses here that um, we want to engage in this conversation. But Jayden, so after you gave mom your manuscript um, and she was in awe, so how did, from, from handing mom the manuscript to the publisher, how, were you excited? Yeah. Yeah, so the day that it returned from the publisher, illustrated, find it, you had this book, then how, how did that make you feel? It made me feel like, like I was so excited and I was like, wow, it looks so good. <laughs> Did this, huh? Yeah. It was so, so crazy. I remember the day that it came and I didn't tell the girls, I knew what it was because I hadn't ordered anything and the package came and I, I remember telling the girls, I'll oh, come downstairs, we have something for you and letting them open it. 
And it was just an amazing feeling watching their faces, watching Jaden's face to see the actual book that we were working on. And then her sisters, her sister celebrating with her. her oh. sister, you know what I'm saying? Like, yes, yes. It, it, was no, it wasn't a moment of sibling ri rivalry or jealousy and none of that. Her, her sister genuinely saying, oh my gosh, Jaden, this is amazing. You're great. And that really, that made me feel so oh, good. that is that is so great. Yes, to have um, the encouragement not only from your parents but from your sibling. Oh, that's that's amazing. Now, how old is the sister? Nine. Nine and nine. Are you a twin? <laughs> yeah. Oh, wow. She's well, a twin. Where's your twin? I'm upstairs. Oh, good luck trying to get her on camera. <laughs> She's 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 a she's a shy one. It's okay. It's okay because she she understood that her sister had just uh, completed something amazing, and to hear that she um, had her own self confidence that she could then say to her sister how proud she was of her. That's that's so that that is just another lesson for for adult women, right? To oh be an encourager, yes. to encourage your sister. When you see your sister uh, accomplish something, no matter what it is, it may not be a book, no matter how small or how large, but to be that encouraging sister, that, that is so great. I'm so, so glad you said that. Sorry, I want to drive that point because when you say no matter how small it is, you know, don't forget, she's only nine years old. You know, these girls looking at um, Kamira, I hope Kamira is the, the daughter. But yes, no, Kamira is the mother. <laughs> Kamira is the mom. You know, just, just looking at them and knowing that what they're doing, yes, they're children and they're, they may be doing something small, but making them feel like that small thing is just everything. Making them feel like what they're doing matters and that, it, and that it's great. And I think that's probably part of the motivation of what, you know, Kamira and I, Kamira and I do for the girls, you know, just making them feel like what they're doing is great. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. And, you know, um, to be able to have this, this type of conversation with your daughter is, um, as you said, uh, Kamara said earlier, time goes by so fast. These are, the, these are the years that you can't buy back. And so to give them the foundation of, uh, and training them so that they, one, know who they are, think Think outside of the box. I mean, it's not the average nine-year-old that would consider writing a book. And so for every young author, I celebrate you. Um, I applaud you. I applaud you, mom, for, for seeing and uh, this, this, this gift. You know, you didn't put it to the side, but you took it a step farther. And now look what you have, a book. Well, I want an autographed one. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you, have to, you have to sign a book, Jaden. Okay. <laughs> yes, you have to sign the book. I'll pay for it, but I want it to be autographed. Can you do that for me? Yes. Yes. Great, great, great. And so I'm going to ask Ms. Dixon if she would unmute. And she can freely share. Um, she did write something in the chat, but I'm going to ask her to share that herself. I want to say to Jaden, congratulations. Thank Keep you. going. The sky is the limit. I'm so proud of you because I'm an educator and getting children to write is like pulling teeth. So for <laughs> you to choose to write, I'm like really super, super, super proud of you. Thank you. Congratulations. Awesome. 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 And you know, um, Kamara is raising a, 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 an eight-year-old entrepreneur herself. Yes. Um, Miss, <laughs> um, would you like to share um, your experience after the holiday? You I want asked, me to share or Skyla to share? I would, I'd like Skyla to share so that Jaden can hear what Skyla also does. Oh, now you're going to be shy. Oh, now she wants to be shy. That's okay. <laughs> That's absolutely fine. So I will share. Um, I, I had hopes that uh, Scully would be able to share um, her, uh, her holiday treat with you tonight. But Scully has a, um, a lemonade stand. 
and some um, other items that goes along with the lemonade stand. And she takes all of her donations and she gives them all of her profits and she gives them to St. Jude's Hospital. Oh, that's beautiful. Yes. And so um, I, I, I'm just honored that she, yes, no. that she, that she wanted to be on tonight. I was surprised to see her so that she could share in your time tonight, Jaden. And so Jaden, so now you get this book and you go to school <laughs> and what happens? How did your friends feel about it? Did you, did you take your book to say, I, I wrote this book? No. No. So how did your friends find out about the fact that you are now an author? Well, like I gave them, I gave them um, a book. Oh, okay. Um, Very nice. Very nice. So to give it some context, I was conscious after, you know, we did this for her, for her not to go to school different. And I did not want her going to school, you know, just kind of. I'm an author, you know, I wrote this book, you know, we, it was a a new concept for us, you know, having a child who's an author, right. Mm -hmm. It hasn't Mm -hmm. happened before. Mm -hmm. And I was just a little sensitive to having her go, going to school, just talking about that all day. So I did ask her, you know, I would, I'll share with your friends, parents and stuff like that, you know, as the weeks go on, but please don't go to school. Just talking about this book, you may make everybody crazy. So, yeah. <laughs> did your teacher get a copy of the book, Jaden? Yeah. Okay. I know she was. Imagine that. that's yeah. raising a a uh, a child celebrity. You know <laughs> how do you 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 can't help but go to school different. You know you've done you have this amazing accomplishment, but what you taught her was have a little humility. <laughs> you know, um, which is another great concept. And, and so, um, a, as you said, so you, you, you follow through with contacting the parents. I mean, you're really teaching us something tonight, you know? Yeah, um, I reached out to the parents. So what happened is, and, and it's a testament to when people want to support you, they will find a way to support you. So we didn't advertise it to like the teachers and all that stuff, only like the you know, she's a Girl Scout. So like the Girl Scout moms and stuff knew because there's relationships there. Well, what happened was the Girl Scout moms told some of the other moms who then told the teachers who then told the principal. So now during quarantine, as we drive up, because they did go in person for a short stint, as we drive up, here comes the school nurse and the principal like, oh, we heard about your book. It's <laughs> <laughs> so like, all right, take it easy. Don't talk about the book all day, you know. But, but so the level of love and support that she received, the orders that we got from um, folks in the school was really, really great. Mm-hmm. Um, but, you know, but we do try to keep it at a minimum when she goes to school with the whole stardom thing. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so uh, quarantine, is she back in school? She is back. Well, they go back next to Tuesday. Mm-hmm. We go back next Tuesday. Next Tuesday. So yeah. what, what state are you in? We're in New York, but we live upstate New York. So okay. we're like an hour outside of NYC. So, you know, it's New York State um, public schools. So because the classes are smaller, they go to school. They, we have the option to go in person. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. So now uh, at nine, what grade is that? Fourth. Fourth grade. Fourth grade. Fourth grade. So do you have uh, any idea about writing a second book? Um, do you want to? Maybe. Maybe. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Do you want to tell her a little bit about what you and your sister were thinking? You don't have to tell her the the title, but you want to tell her what you guys have been thinking about doing? Like the writing? Uh Uh-huh. You know what I'm talking about? No. Okay, never mind. (laughs) (laughs) Okay, she can't remember at the time. Um, It it, it kind of sounds like maybe we're going to have the twins doing something together. Mm -hmm. Oh. Oh, Ring what? the bell, Jaden? Oh my goodness. Okay, well, we'll revisit that next time. Maybe, she, maybe she's just not ready to reveal that. 
but that would be, I, that just sounds like that would also be an amazing project to do something with your twin sister. I can't wait for that. <laughs> now, how, how are you the only two, you, you have only two daughters? Yeah, just the two girls, my twin girls. That was it. <laughs> okay, so uh, are you homeschooling? No, so they go to school nine to one. So it's more of like a half day hybrid type of situation. Then they come home and we do somewhat of, an home, of homeschooling. But what that really means is we're doing a lot of the, the practice work things that would generally get done in the classroom with the teacher. Yes. So th they go in person, they learn the concept, but a lot of the worksheets and, you know, practicing stuff we have to help them with. And as a parent, you know, and you're a teacher, Kamira, so I think you can understand your mom. I'm like, <laughs> you know, yeah. certain things we have to learn before we can help them right. with it. So that's something that I kind of had to get used to over quarantine is really um, fourth grade math is taught differently. Different. Yeah. Yes. Now they have to learn their way now. I learned it. So, and in order to to get her through her schoolwork properly, I have to learn the way she's taught in order to help her with her work. So, you know, in between uh, the book stuff, there's the real life stuff. The right. fourth grade, Jaden. <laughs> right, right, right. I just can't even imagine having to um, teach my daughter. Um, I only have one child. And I just, as you just said, you would first have to learn it, then teach it. <laughs> but, you know, because we have uh, uh, an educator with us tonight, I, I want to talk about young girls in the school system. What are, what are you seeing? How, do, how, how, I mean, I know that they're out now, but during the school year, during the regular school time, um, Kamara, what grade do you teach? I teach first grade. First grade. Okay, and let's talk about self 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 confidence in the first grade, confidence building in the in the first grade. How yeah. how <laughs> you said yeah. yeah. Okay, how 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 does that work with a, a first grader? Even in the bar as low as first grade, you'll see the low self esteem, and then that's when the bullying comes in because oh, this person looks better than me, or I'm or I'm not good enough. So then they start. To pick on the next one so that's why i really like Jaden's title like it's really just reading it alone was encouraging wow. reading so the you, title yes 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 okay so now do you think that that is uh, uh something that needs to happen in the school system teaching at an early age um self-confidence and care but like in my school now we do like social emotional learning which includes confidence learning how to express your character. emotions so yes. we do character education because character is extremely important now because especially even for a teacher because if a student don't have character so now not only do you have to do the academics part you also now have to deal with the emotions and the self-esteem that comes with it so yes. you wow. teach both it goes hands in hand. So that's another reason why I go back to Jaden's book, where I was like, wow, this is amazing. Like, this is more of what we need in our classrooms. Mm -hmm. Kamira, can I ask you, um, how old are the students in, in, in a first grade again? They're seven mother? years old, seven They're years seven. old. So I, um, Gloria, if it's, if it's okay, if I share something with you, because, um, so we actually, we created this journal it's mm -hmm. called the I Believe Inspirational Journal. And really what it is, it's like a diary type planner where it's for little girls and they have a positive affirmation for each week of the year. So as they go through their journal to write, you know, they're starting to write their thoughts. Um, they see these affirmations every week. So a week doesn't go by where there's not something that's pouring into them confidence building. And I'm saying this because when we went to um, create these, I ordered um, almost a hundred of them, okay? Mm -hmm. And there was a printing error in them. So I could not use them. So I have boxes here in my house of almost a hundred of these. Um, and I can, we can talk offline. I can tell you where the error is, but they have nowhere to go, no home. 
So if you know of little girls who can use something to write in, like it has grid lines for them to write and just journal their thoughts and stuff like that, I would be more than happy to donate them to, you know, little girls in their school. And look, here's an affirmation right here. I am perfect just the way I am. Oh, oh that's yeah. so, yes, yeah. that's powerful. That, that is, is so powerful. powerful. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Yes. So we Perfect. can let's talk about that offline, but let's stay in this conversation. Yeah. Uh, uh, Kamara, you made mention of bullying. Okay. Um, and th- that is really uh, the, the results that that's like not the root cause. You see a little girl bullying another kid, you know, mm-hmm. there's a problem. And so um, at one time, you know, there was a zero tolerance and kids were, sent out of the classroom or so h- how does your school deal with that i'm sorry the phone um can you ask you said how does my school deal with it bullying yes well normally like in the classroom us teachers are responsible for that like um reprimanding the student for um infractions but in my school i'm blessed that we don't really have too much of it mm-hmm. okay Great. Well, um, I, I asked that question because um, Jaden's book, um, as Materia uh, said, it is such an encouraging, it, it could actually um, address so many different issues. And for anyone that's acting out in that way, being the bully or being bullied, you know, it would be it's such a, an appropriate uh, time to talk about building their self esteem you know, reminding them, giving them those affirmations. And thank you for offering that book where a young girl could have a daily affirmation. Now we know that in, in some homes that, you know, parents do encourage um, their children with daily affirmations, but there's unfortunately so many that they don't have that type of guidance. They don't have, you know, for whatever reason, they don't have a diary or a book that would reassure them. I love what, what the one that you opened up. I am fine just the way I am. I'm perfect just the way I am. That is so powerful, you know, and to be able to um, encourage um, a, a young girl or you know what those are good for teenagers as well I know, i'm saying young girl right. it's true but, <laughs> you know even um, adults yes. <laughs> well, yeah. Yeah. absolutely absolutely, mm-hmm. absolutely now you know M- materia I, I, tell me let's talk about you you obviously are a businesswoman i can tell <laughs> you, you must be mm-hmm. a businesswoman are you not <laughs> okay okay so so let's, let's talk about your business. What do you do? So, so I actually, I work a nine to five. I work in corporate finance in the city in Manhattan. Um, and I just, my dad is an entrepreneur. I grew up watching my dad own his own business, even though entrepreneurship principles weren't verbally spoken to me. You know, there were a lot, there was a lot of example that was mm-hmm. set for me. Um, I feel like I may have felt into entrepreneurship earlier in life had my dad spoken to me about entrepreneurship principles. So, you know, it goes back to some of the intentionality that we were talking about here, being intentional with my daughters and letting her do this thing. So anyway, out of the book experience um, birthed uh, something that I call the LOL strategy, because after Jaden launched her book, you know, as a mom, I'm posting on Facebook. I'm like, you know, support Jaden. And a lot of parents were messaging me. They were sending me messages. I had aspiring um, children's book writers messaging me because they wanted to know how we did it. You know, what was the process? Because a major roadblock in writing a children's book or publishing a children's book is the illustrations because they, they can cost so much money. Mm-hmm. So they, yeah, they can cost a lot. So anyway, I created this blueprint for people to make it easier for them to launch their own children's book. Like I firmly believe that we all have a story to tell that young minds, young children need to hear. Right, right. Right. But that needs to be there. There are stories that I wish I read as a child that would teach me certain life lessons earlier. Mm-hmm. So I try to help others convey their story, tell their story to children. Wow. And so this strategy, is it available? 
It is. It is available. I actually have a cohort, I call it. They started on Tuesday going on, going on right now. So what I do is I take them under my wing for four weeks. We meet for an hour a week and I take them from writing their book all the way through to launching to where in four weeks it's gonna, it should be on sale available for people to buy it. So you're coaching. I'm, I'm coaching. I'm <laughs> And I provide them with tools and resources because I just have this belief where, you know, you can coach people, right? You can talk to them and show them how to do things. But I know I'm this type of person where I'm just like, okay, yes, but I just need you to, to give me what I need so I can actually do it because yeah. I wouldn't be coming to you if I had the time to research. So yes, is I've put all of the resources in one place. Like here's a bunch of illustrators that I reached out to. I know they're affordable. Here's their contacts. You don't have to research any illustrators. Here's a bunch of people who can design really nice Instagram promo videos or whatever for your book. They're super affordable. They cost $25. Here's their names. Here's their email. When you get to that point, these are the folks who you can contact. So I give them the resource, resources that they need to cut down all that research time yes. because I, I went through the process. I did it and I didn't have that. You yes. know, I, I wasted a lot of money made errors in journals, like, you know, so what I'm committed to doing is really just help people find success in getting their children's book and, um, and things similar, um, published successfully. Oh, that's, that's so wonderful. and you know, your resource, um, that's like a do it for you. You know, you've already, you, you've already uh, put a lot of labor into, the, uh, the part of writing that is labor intensive, finding illustrators, you know, developing resources. You can, and, and it's difficult trying to do both at the same time. So you have a format, um, obviously it's successful. And so you have a cohort going on now. So when is the yeah. next time that you are <laughs> accepting students? Next Wednesday. So I do two cohorts at a time. So we're going to be two weeks in for the first one. And then the second one will start this coming Wednesday. Um, you know, and it's nice because it builds a community. You know, right now I have, um, it's like maybe 28 women, I think one male. And, um, you know, they just hop into Facebook group. They ask questions, you know, they they create accountability partners, you know, or maybe these are, these are folks who don't have a support system outside of the internet. You know, maybe they don't have anybody at home who they could share their wins with. So I become that person for four weeks. I'm like, listen, if you need somebody to look over your manuscript just to give you some type of feedback, I'll be that guy. If you need somebody to ping you guys in the group, like, listen, stay on track, stay focused. I'll be that guy. So I just, I just try to be that support system over that course of time, because I, I truly genuinely want to see people succeed at this because we did it. If my daughter can do it, if I could sit here with my daughter and publish a children's book, what's crazy, Gloria, is that her first book, was a girl book. We call it the girl book. The, the okay. main character in the book is a girl. And then after it launched, you know, people loved it so much. I think like one person asked me like, oh, do you have one for boys? And, you know, Jaden was just like, I don't want the boys to feel left out. She wrote a manuscript in like a day based off of her first book. And we launched that second book within two weeks using the blueprint that I had from the first book. We launched that second book within two weeks of the first book launching. And that's what I try to tell people like, listen, it does not have to be difficult. You know, I have the tools here for you. If this, if this is something like you really want to do, I'm here. I can help you get it done over the course of, um, of the course. And can you give us the information for those that are, are watching? How would they um, register for, uh, I think you said next Wednesday? Right. Next, right. Okay. Yeah. So next Wednesday is the next start date. Um, the website is the LOL strategy.com. It's called, so LOL stands for little ones launch. So the course is really for other children who want to publish their own children's book. You know, parents can purchase this course and learn the process to help them publish, or it can be adult writers who want to publish their own. I have a lot of teachers. I have retired teachers who come to me, you know, they've written manuscripts, but never did anything with them. And I tried to make my course, listen, I'm transparent. I don't believe in sending people to websites and they got to click, click, click to find out how much a course is. The course is $27. It's $27 
total for the four weeks. You get me for four weeks, you get access to everything. I try to make it affordable so that people have enough money to actually get it done. Yes, yes. You, you know what's so amazing about this? Let's backtrack. <laughs> you, you sent Jaden to her room on punishment. Jaden returns with the manuscript. You read it and see how powerful this, this, your daughter has, had written this manuscript. You get it published and now it's your business. Crazy. <laughs> so, so crazy. Intentional. <laughs> I'm a woman of faith and I, I, and I believe that um, nothing is done, um, that things does not ju don't just necessarily happen. You know, that, yeah, um, yeah that on that day, it was intended, unfortunately, Jaden, yeah. <laughs> for you to be on punishment. I don't know what you did. All but things break it, together for the good. All things, believe me, believe me, they do. I mean, there have been, listen, it, it's, the process is successful at this point, but that didn't come with a number of mistakes. And when I tell you guys, you know, a lot of money was wasted, you know, along the way with the trial and error, but, but every mistake I made, God sent somebody or something to let me know that it's okay. And I'll give you one quick example because I'm a woman of faith and I just like to share like little short testimonies. When we did, this is after we launched her book and, and we were putting the journal together because the journal is something we really wanted to do. And I realized there was an error in the journal. I was afraid because the first day we launched the journal, she had over a hundred orders. All of those orders now needed to be replaced because there, there was an error in it. Only one person noticed the error, but as a person of integrity, I'm like, we need to replace all of them because yeah, I never yeah. want somebody to look back at what, what, they, what they purchased from us and say, this isn't quality. So I was like, okay, God, you know, you know we don't necessarily have the money to do this right now, but it's the right thing to do. So we are just, I sent everybody who purchased an email letting them know that we noticed an error that they have new journals coming. The next day after that, after I placed the order for those journals, an old student of mine, when I ran the beta course for the LOL strategy, when I, when I was sharing it with the first set of students, I hadn't spoken to her in a few weeks. She sent me a random text. She was just like, Materia, I just had you on my heart. I just cash after you. I don't even know how she got my cash app. I just cash after you. It was small. $50. But what that told me, God was just like, don't even worry about it. Yes. Don't even worry about it. There was no reason for, for, for me to randomly be on her heart for $50 to say, let me send material $50. And it was just a small, God was just like, don't worry about it. And yes. I won't go into the rest of the story because that money that got spent ended up getting replaced almost to the dollar a couple of days ago. Wow. And, and you know, um, I, I'm going to venture to say, that because uh, based on what you just shared right it was the posture of your heart that got used because when you were concerned about um the product you could have said well there's an error you know and and could have just given an excuse is, is it human error but because of your character that did not set well with you and so you recalled it and you gave notice to every person that purchased, purchased that book to let them know that there was an, an error. That's honesty and character. And, you know, it, it's just the manifestation of what you're teaching your daughter. Right? Mm -hmm. So, and, and I can identify with that because I just recently released the book, a small, something very small, um, uh, devotional. And with all of the editing, I, I read this thing a hundred times and there was one word that was wrong. So instead of S-O-W, it was S-E-W. I, I almost <laughs> lost my mind. <laughs> with all of the editing, all of the editing tools, with yeah. all of the eyes, you yeah. know, it was a, but I almost lost my mind. So I can identify with that. I was like, I unpublished it. I was yeah. like, no way. <laughs> it's never... Yeah, because you get into your own head, like, is anyone going to notice? But no, this is wrong. Like, we can't, you can't leave it like this. I, yes, I understand. Yes, I understand. yes. 
But, you know, we can't teach our daughters one way and do things a different way. So you taught her to be responsible and to be accountable for your work. That's right. You know, um, we're here tonight on this, this recording because of my daughter. Because I simply said something and she would not take no for an answer that we must, she wanted me to be on Instagram. I'm not a camera person. I was like, no, I'm not doing that. And she wouldn't give up. And so I said, okay, one night I did it. And, you know, it kind of caught on. And here we are. This is like our number 12 or 13th recording. Wow. And so our daughters play such a role in, in, in pushing us. You know, there's nothing like a mother and daughter's relationship. No, no. Nothing like no. it. No, no. And I, I work with women. I'm looking at time. I work with women that um, unfortunately have made some unhealthy decisions in their lives and um, have spent time in incarceration, you know, suffer with mental health issues. And when, when, when talking with them, I always look for that mother-daughter relationship. And unfortunately, so many of them didn't have that, did not have that. And so um, it, it's, so when we decided to do Mothers and Daughters actually um, was an outreach that we started in 2005. And you know, being that the new term now is serial entrepreneur. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you know, doing so many different things. Yeah. That really grew, but I stopped doing that. Um, in one way I stopped in, and in another, I, all I did was, ex- it was the ministry just expanded. You know, and so here we are continuing to work and to talk to and to hear from mothers and daughters. Our we are being intentional again because the 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 purpose is to prevent girls from being placed out of their homes. There's far too many uh, of our girls in juvenile detentions in incarcerations, you know, um, prostituting, doing things that um, they were, I like to say, they were victims far longer and before they ever became um, perpetrators. And so in viewing what we have here tonight, this conversation about encouraging our daughters and um, um, you guys are amazing taking some taking look taking that punishment that punishment has now given life to so many and we bless god for that thank you jamin thank you (laughs) and thank you material for seeing what she produced that night and you know hundreds of mothers and daughters hundreds of women hundreds of children are now being helped Thank you. And as uh, Kamara said, as an educator, she sees the value in what you guys have done. Wouldn't it be amazing if every young girl in the school system could read that book? Oh, man. Just to know, but just to know that it's, po- that it's possible for them to do the same thing. Because, you know, I've I've been in not necessarily their school district, but I've gone to other school districts and the kids do not get exposure to seeing other children do things right. like, like this. So just knowing that, oh, well, I, okay, it's possible. I can do this. Yes. yes. You know? Yeah. And, and I, let me be, Let me be intentional, you know, young girls of color. Yes. You know, um, need to see that at nine, she's a role model at eight. Skylar is a role model, you know, and they may not understand all of the responsibilities that come with that because they're only eight and nine, Mm -hmm. but because they are, have been taught and they have this, you know, awesome relationship with their parents. And now they are growing into their, into who, and to using and exercising their gifts that will bless so many. 
what well, that is that is just so amazing to me that is uh, just so amazing and my heart is heavy for our young girls that um that that don't have this you know um during these times that they were out of school because school sometimes is your safe place mm -hmm. you know school can yep. be the, the safe place for some of our children and so not being in school and having to be at home, um, I wish we could get this book into the hands of so many more in New Jersey. Yeah, well, listen, we have my to work prayer, on that. <laughs> my prayer is that children like Skylar and Jaden um, can kind of be a light and an inspiration to their peers in school. You know, those kids who may not have somebody at home to pour into them, that our girls, you know, and other little boys can be an inspiration to those children. Oh, yeah, absolutely. They can. Absolutely, they can. And so um, I, I'm, I'm going to invite you guys another time so that we can have this mother conversation, a parenting conversation, um, because um, I say so often, they don't come with books. <laughs> and instructions and we make mistakes along the way yeah. but even tonight's conversation you know is is it, it could inspire a parent you know these are difficult times financially and you know parents are really under a lot of stress and so sometimes you know there's such a thin line between disciplining your child you know and abusing the child and so conversations like this could really make the difference in a parent's life. And so I'd like to have so, so many more uh, conversations and I'm definitely going to have the two of you back. <laughs> um, so Jaden, you see what you've done, Jaden? See what you did. <laughs> <laughs> another great thing, Skylar, another great thing. Mm -hmm. Awesome, so awesome. And you know, um, I am so encouraged to know that Jaden in New York and Skylar in New Jersey, that as you said, they are role models for their peers and they have something to say, not just for their age group, but for, for el elders, for, <laughs> for adults as well, <laughs> for adults as well, you know? And so I, I wanna thank you mothers for, for being here tonight. Thank you for engaging in conversation. Thank you for sharing your gifts material. And thank you for sharing your daughter to the two of you. Um, you know, this is um, Mothers and Daughters Candid Conversation. And I want to keep it just as that. Just as we conversated tonight, I want mothers and their daughters. <clears throat> and sometimes it won't be with daughters. It may just be a conversation with, with, with mothers encouraging each other. You know, um, sharing resources, <clears throat> sharing sharing resources, and being that support for each other, in which unfortunately so many parents don't have the support, nor do they have the accountability partners. And so mm -hmm. we hope that you know more conversations like this, candid, just just conversating about problems and issues with results you know we won't we won't just talk about the problems but as we did tonight um thank you material because you took um a problem and you turned it into a solution and i thank you and thank you um, we're going to definitely talk about how we can get um those the the uh, journals to um to new jersey <laughs> to new jersey yeah we can definitely connect i just kind of want to say one thing to on um, parents who might be uh listening to the live um if there's anything that i i just i want to be impactful and intentional here if there is anything i could leave you with i want to say that it's important for us not to limit our children and regardless of what it is you know Jaden came to me with a simple manuscript she was technically eight when she wrote it and I could have said, good job, honey, and kept it moving. But we need to be, we need to believe in our children enough to want to go to next step, to go, to want to go the extra mile for our children, no matter how small it is. We, we want to make small things seem great to our children. So I just encourage you 
continue to believe in your kids. Don't dismiss the small achievements that they show you. Make those small achieve achievements seem great because you'll be surprised how they will pour back into you what you poured into them. Yes, yes, absolutely. absolutely. Thank you for that. You know, um, again, um, adult women, parents, we all need encouragement. And um, as you just said, and, and that is scripture, don't despise small beginnings, you know, um, and God has given every last one of us a gift. And sometimes all it takes is a little watering. And when it begins to spout, then it takes someone to take notice and encourage. And so, you know, again, um, and I'm hoping that that's something that we can do. We have great kids, you know, such kids with amazing talents. And all they need is someone to, to take notice and to encourage them and invest. We must invest our time, our talents, and our own gifts to these children, to our children. They're all our children. You know, um, I'm, I'm still on It Takes a Village. <laughs> That's that it does take a village. It does take a village. And with that being said, I, I just want to thank you. And I'm if you if you don't mind, I know that we have women of faith. And so I'd like to close and my daughter usually does this, but I'm just gonna say a brief prayer. Is that okay with you guys? Yeah. But we thank you tonight. We thank you, God, for Jaden, and we thank you for Skyla. We thank you, Lord, for the gifts and the talents. And then God, we thank you for the parents that you intentionally gave to these children, God. We thank you for the bond between these mothers and daughters. And then we thank you, Lord God, that they have been infectious in their communities, that they are sharing, Lord God. And we pray now, Lord, that everything that they touch will multiply. We pray, Lord, that this book, oh Lord, the, the lemonade stand and, and Skylar's ability to touch hearts, God, would continue to manifest and to grow beyond, you said, beyond anything we could ever ask, think, or imagine. And that is in his name. And for his sake, we do ask. Amen. 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 God bless you guys. Good night. Yes, good night. night. Bye, Skylar. Good night.